Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chris Kugler, and this is the first part of what is essentially going to be just me recording my game development and having a little bit of conversation, talking out what I'm thinking, what I'm uh, what I'm planning, my approach towards writing code for video games, and let's just see how this goes. So. What I'm going to be doing today is I am essentially implementing my skill system into my first person RPG, which is as of yet unnamed. And well, let me just start off with showing you what I have so far. So once uh, Unity loads up here, I've got a first person RPG system I'm controlling with the controller right now. Uh, typical left stick move, right stick to um, look around. I have jumping controls and you can see there in the bottom left of my window is my health and stamina. And on the right side is a quick look at what my controls do. Uh, ignore that word guard under the B button, that's from a previous build. And I've got some little enemies running around here. You can see these adorable little bunny rabbits. I'm just hanging out. Oops, accidentally got into a fight. So, as you can see, we switched to a separate transition for the battles. And I've got a quick look to target different enemies. I've also got a free look with the right stick, assuming I end up doing any kind of virtual reality support with Oculus or PlayStation VR. You'll be targeting enemies with the headset, and you'll be um, using the controller to choose your actions. So I've got a, um, you see my stamina down in the bottom left and my health on the bottom left are draining and changing based on the enemy's attacks. And I've got these quick time events that keep popping up. So the enemies, when they attack, that ring appears. And hitting guard at the right time when the two rings intersect will cause a lower, um, uh, partial block of the enemy's attack based on the player's current stats and the timing with which I click the guard button and when I attack I get that um, I guess you would call that a slider meter I'm not sure exactly what that's called it has a randomized um, randomized speed as well as a randomized, well not randomized, I was going to say the randomized um, color range is there. And let me pause it while I'm doing the attack so we can do a closer look. So you can see here I've got this red portion of the meter which if I s select the attack button while the ball is over it, that counts as a miss against the enemy. Clicking while the ball is in the yellow range is a normal attack, and the green is a critical attack. Now, the um, there is a base range for that, and that's just based on what I've specified in the Unity Editor. Uh, if we can go find the enemy here. Uh, battle system, battle system. There we go, the arena. All right, so we can come look at the enemy. You can see here I have the, the guard prompt that's currently showing, and there's some set ranges for... I should really zoom that in on the video. So as you can see, over here in the inspector window when I'm looking at my attack quick time event, I've got a few variances for randomization for the um, width and the position of the critical and normal attack sections, as well as the speed of the slider. I had that initially for testing purposes, but currently what I have is a system wherein 
the stats for that are determined by the weapons that are equipped by the player. So I've got this um, equipped weapon and I'm setting the normal width and the critical width. The speed is still a matter of randomization. I may or may not change that later. And this is essentially the accuracy of the weapon, right? If a weapon is more accurate, you're going to have a larger um, margin of error for your normal and critical for your normal attacks, um, you know, for your normal attacks. And maybe a certain weapon has a high chance of critical attacks. You would get a larger green section on the slider, or it might be a have a very strong attack modifier for hitting a critical hit, but a much lower chance, making it much more difficult to hit the green section. So what I kind of set out with is I want my stats in my RPG to have a real effect on how combat and exploring the overworld are, um, are done. So the stamina meter, for instance, right now you have to have a full stamina meter to attack but I'm also considering changing that so that you can do a partially strong attack. So maybe if you attack while you have 50% stamina, your maximum damage that you can do is decreased by 50%. So a player could sit there and continually spam the attack button and keep trying to hit the QTE, but ultimately if they're not playing smartly or patiently and they're not waiting for their stamina to regen, at least part of the way, their attacks are mostly going to be ineffective. Now, what I want to do today is I want to implement a skill system wherein active skills can be used in combat, such as a slash that will hit multiple enemies, or maybe an elemental attack, or something that uh, increases attack power or decreases the defense of the enemies. You know, a variety of, um, you know, traditional and, you know, maybe some non-traditional attacks as the, um, you know, as I think them up, but also a passive skill system wherein you could get something, a you could buy a skill that is always either always available or only a certain number of skills can be equipped at a time that could increase your base stats or change your um, you know change your stamina regeneration maybe you get a passive HP regeneration over time you know really that's all just up to design but right now I don't have a system by which I could affect stats in that way aside from the equipment so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get started implementing that right now and I can decide later on whether I even still want equipment to determine my um, my stats or how I want my stats to determine the QTEs. So let's go ahead and stop this here. Now let's see. So I've got a um, and I'm sorry. I'm starting this video series. I'm starting these recordings. You know while I'm mid project. So there's going to be a lot of stuff here that is already developed out that if it's requested, I can stop and do some reviews on some code I've already written. But this series is, well, not this series even, but largely what I'm trying to accomplish by recording videos is I want to kind of not instruct people on how to make video games, but I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are interested in how games are made or maybe are trying to get started themselves with something like Unity 3D or you know, really just want some background noise and aren't really interested in the content. You know, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe this will help somebody. <laughs> so let's see here. So first off, I've got my player class and my player class has a variety of things here. But at my core, I have some base stats. And this is kind of a carryover from an older game that I made that was more of a traditional RPG on mobile. And I have this, these concepts here of HP, MP, um, strength, vitality, intelligence, and agility to determine 
attack power, defense, um, spell power, and dodge rate. And for this game, I've added stamina and maximum stamina because until recently, I wasn't quite sure on how I wanted my stats to interact with, um, with the world. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that I do not need these. Do I need these? No. No. We do not need strength, vitality, intelligence, or agility. Uh, first off, because... In my game, I've decided that I think having the numbers present to the player is kind of irrelevant, especially when I'm trying to focus on the results of those numbers. So I was reading something very interesting recently. I, um, I'll find the website and I'll put the link in the show notes, but it was essentially talking about how to make a role-playing game. And it talked about stats in games. And one of the games it brought up was The Legend of Zelda. You now it gave me a bit of pause because I was thinking, well, you know, Zelda doesn't have stats necessarily. You have your hearts and you have strength, or you don't even have strength. You have, you can up, get a upgraded sword or two and you can get different armor and different shields, but there's not really a defense rating number. There's no real attack power number. You just, take less swings to kill the enemy, you have more hearts total, and you lose less hearts per hit. And maybe you can uh, reflect a stronger attack with a stronger shield. But there's no status screen, there's no uh, DPS, there's no you know um, HP recovery time, there's nothing like that. But they kind of framed it in a way where Okay, well, you have HP, and each heart, it takes two hits to lose a full heart, so each heart is two HP. You literally, one hit against you is one HP, and a heart recovers two HP. And you have an attack power of one, two, three, depending on which sword it is. You know, it really kind of made me think a little differently about how we look at stat points in games and how we talk about min-maxing your character build or things like that in some of these larger RPGs like Dark Souls or or um, well, Final Fantasy. The stats are more or less irrelevant for the most part, but you know it's a, it's a large number character sheet that goes into determining how much damage is done per attack and you know how many hits you can take and X, Y, Z and you know, for the most part, the only things that really matter are how many hits does it take to kill the enemy and how many hits can you take. So if I'm going to get in... So if I'm playing uh, Dark Souls or something like that, and I'm killing enemies that take three hits to kill. Now, if I go and increase my strength by another five points, does it now take two hits to kill? Or have I increased the number of damage I'm doing, but not enough that I that I um, that it affects the number of hits. Am I still killing him in three hits? Therefore, the battle is still taking more the same time and is no less dangerous than it was before those extra stat points. So that's, that's kind of my motivation behind going towards this type of system where my stat points aren't really on display and aren't really being micromanaged or, or managed at all by the player but they do affect the gameplay at the core. So first off, I suppose I need my gameplay affecting stats to be in one place. And it seems like those stats should be in this stats class, except that this class is also being used by my enemy class. My enemy characters have stats. And to, if I remember correctly, they primarily just use the HP level and the stamina level. They don't really... They have a set attack power damage that they do. They have um, 
Don't really have a defense rating to speak of so far. But, you know, that could change. That could certainly change, especially once I start implementing more enemy types. I have the, uh, the rabbit that you saw earlier. That's really my only enemy at this point, and that was kind of set up as here is a complete one-to-one -one enemy that I'm going to implement, and it has an AI pattern for moving on the overworld. It has a battle AI for during combat. It uses, um, I load in the model via object pooling. So, you know, I have a set of preloaded bunny 3D models that are pulled in as the actual enemy, in for, the, sorry, the actual enemy is spawned in. So I'm not allocating and deallocating 3D models all willy-nilly and you know thrashing my CPU and memory usage and garbage collecting constantly. But the the enemy is still is using using these stats and you know maybe I want to split this off. I called it base stats for a reason because I intended to implement a player stats and an enemy stats underneath it. And maybe different enemy types utilize a different um, a different set of statistics. Maybe there's a different mechanism for guarding that's specific to a certain enemy, or um, even something I haven't implemented yet or given more than a cursory thought. Uh, things like status effects or um, elemental damage resistance and damage attacks, and even the enemy's ability to use certain skills. So I kind of want to leave that very bare-boned with that, you know, Cardinal 4 stats and my HP um, MP, which is currently not used in this game. I am going to use it for executing skills, though I don't know if, if um, enemies will have a limited MP or not. I haven't quite decided that yet. You know, it's still quite a lot up in the air at this moment, but that's all part of the fun of game design, is I get to you know, make some things up as I go along. You know, some things I might, you know, accidentally stumble across when I implement certain features, and, you know, other ones, maybe I just need to wait for the appropriate moment of inspiration to have an idea and make a decision. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a player stats class. get rid of my namespace there, do a little format, I'm going to implement base stats, which doesn't have any virtual or abstract methods of any kind. It simply implements inotify property changed, which, yeah, that's fine. I don't need to re-implement that or do anything. Hydrate. I'm going to want to make that virtual so that any new stats I add, I can call the base version of hydrate and then, you know, hydrate those stats. Um, hydrate from base stats, though. Hmm. You know, I did say I wanted to make this a, um, no, you know what, I'll leave that alone for the moment. I was just thinking about making this an abstract class and going ahead and creating enemy stats now, but I'll come back to that when I feel like I need to. But for now, let's go ahead and leave that as a... I don't like how it creates, when you generate methods, it creates them as internal. Like I have no, in a um, Unity 3D project, I have real no use for internal since I'm not compiling DLLs and, you know, linking multiple projects together. All my code is in one single project. And what are you yelling about? I already have a class called player stats. I do. Tell me more. Ah, so I have this scripts old folder. So when I started this project, 
I brought in a lot of scripts that I had from a prototype of a first-person shooter I was working on, as well as I brought in a lot of scripts from a mobile game I did. So I can get a lot of these, um, you know, boilerplate infrastructure classes that I have. Like, um, I have a sound manager class that I define the sound effects and the scene in the editor, and they have a, um, they have a key that I can reference, and I use a, um, my sound effects manager as a singleton class so that I can reference it from wherever I need to play a sound effect. I can just say, uh, sound effects manager dot instance dot play sound, and it will pop up. Okay, so this guy is, yeah, this is from my first person shooter. So I'm not going to bring him over. I can just go ahead and delete him. I'm fine with that. As I, um, as I go through the project, I'm finding things that I want to use that I'm pulling into my main scripts folder. And by the end of the project, I'm going to have deleted this scripts old folder. And also, I mean, whether I use it or not, I'm going to go through here and do a final cursory look of at universally useful components and bring them in because I want to, at the end, I want to export this script folder and all my prefabs and treat that as kind of a template for my next game that I make. And by that time that comes around, I should have a much lower development cycle because I'll have already implemented and, you know, designed out and built a variety of things. So now I've got my player stats class. So what do I want in player stats? So my weapon is affecting this min base damage and max base damage. And right now in my QTE, I'm pulling that directly off of the weapon. But maybe my passive skills are going to affect damage. Now maybe I'll have pass. Maybe I have armor. And armor affects my, um, it affects my stability um, recovery rate. My original idea was that heavier armor would have a higher defense uh, rating, you know, protect you from more damage. But in turn, you have a slower stamina regen time. You know, kind of a trade-off. You could get stronger and stronger armor and take a lot of damage, but... You know, if you're sitting here and it's, you know, taking you several seconds to do your next attack, and maybe you keep dropping stamina because you're continually guarding as well, yeah, a faster enemy could outpace you. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, I have a min damage and max damage, and when I do my, you know, normal damage as well as my critical attack modifier, I take my initial damage rating as a random range between these two values. So am I going to want passive skills that will affect either min or max, or do I want to just call it uh, plus you know, x damage if you have this skill? Or x percent damage, maybe it's a plus 5 percent. Um, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm going to think about that for a second. Yeah, so, so these stats aren't going to be the final output of whatever calculations I have that affect the QTE. This is just another input into it. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a few things here. All right, so what do I have? I have my weapon stats, which have a min and max base damage on these guys. And I've got armor. And I've got shields. So let's take a look at all these together. So min, and, min damage and max damage. Mm. For now, I'm just going to have a 
single damage modifier. And actually... All right, so I pared that down a little bit. I'm gonna have, for my first sweep here, I'll have passive skills that affect attack damage, that affect normal and critical attack accuracy, the damage done by a critical attack, uh, increased defense, and increase uh, or change stamina recovery. So that's a nice, uh, that's a nice starting place. It um, are already stats that I use to an extent. So let's take a look here. So for my player, instead of base stats, I want player stats. This will be looking at base stats .load test data. So this is kind of, if you see these methods around in my code, these are things I'm using as a, um, for during testing purposes. Uh, this might turn later on into the new game, Vanilla Player. This is his starting stats. Um, and yeah, let's, that one I don't mind making virtual. Let's load some test data, and let's say um, yeah. Well, since these are modifications, we'll start these at zero. But I'm going to go ahead and leave this here in case I do add some specific, some player-specific stats that aren't going to be modifications from passive skills. So these will all initialize to zero. Yeah. 
yeah, I'm going to be leaving the weapon and armor stuff in for the moment, so it'll have a min and max damage already set. But I will leave myself a to-do. If any of you don't know, there's a, uh, you can go to view task list, and I've got that right down here. That'll mark any to-do items that you've marked in your comments. So you can just come back and easily find these later. Like, I like to listen to music while I'm, uh, while I'm working, as I'm listening to music now while I'm recording audio. And having my, um, without having a game settings screen implemented yet, so I could actually just set the game music volume and the sound effect volume, I have the volume defaulted to zero. So the audio that I've put in the game doesn't show up and, you know, interfere with my music listening. Because really, you know, the most important thing is I got some good tunes to work to. Yeah, and if you're curious, right now I'm listening to the Undertale soundtrack, which is very catchy. That's right. So I got my stats implemented here. Uh, do I have any? Yeah, no other errors from that because this is the only place where I'm using this guy. And everything else is only looking at stats, stamina, the HP, I'm not even looking at MP yet. But let's take a look here. So I've got. So I've got attack power. So let's go ahead and do that. So. So I've got my show attack. So first off, to show you my full, my full, um, essentially my call stack, but my execution order of this, I've got my update call. And my update call looks to see if the player's in battle or not. And if they're in battle, we do an in battle update. Otherwise we're on the overworld. And for the, I have nothing going on in my overworld update at the moment. I will be implementing skills and things that are um, only usable on the overworld, like being able to look at the enemy unit that's walking around and inspect what and how many enemies are a part of that battle, what's their uh, overall battle rating, I guess you would call it, in comparison to the player, uh, things of that nature. So in battle. I've got this um, can attack, which is essentially just, hey, is it is the player not already attacking? Uh, is an enemy focused? We're not trying to escape from battle. And in my player base class is the stamina full. And like I said before, I might switch to a partial stamina setup, but for now, you have to have full stamina, not already be attacking, meaning the attack QTE isn't already showing. Uh, we're not trying to run away, so you can't be hedging your bets like that. And are you actually looking at an enemy? And if those things are true... There we are. Uh, if those things are true, the attack display, if you remember on our, um, our game screen here, this is this A button is attack, and if you're not able to attack, the text is red. If as soon as you're able to attack, it turns white. And if the player plays but, uh, pushes button A, we start our coroutine for attacking the focused enemy. And when we're attacking the focused enemy, we are essentially running the the quick time event. And this enables the quick time event as well as initializing the position and everything. Set some random positions and everything for um, 
the normal attack, the critical attack section. It takes the width for the normal and critical attacks from our weapon, which we'll be changing to, in addition to the weapon, incorporate our base stats, which we're going to set later using passive skills, and turns it on. And it waits until the QTE is disabled, either by the player pressing the A button a second time, either missing using a normal attack or hitting a critical, as I described earlier, or running out of time. The slider has gone all the way to the right side. We've failed to press the button in time, and the players lost their chance. They wasted their stamina. Sucks to be them. Get good. <laughs> which will disable the QTE and bring us back out of the code coroutine. There we go. So we're yielding, yield returning the coroutine, so this will wait at this point until the coroutine is finished. And if our next attack hit, which is set by our show Q attack QTE method in the player class, we make use of that. Right? We grab our damage, we check if our attack was a critical, and if it was, we apply the modifier, um, which hopefully is not zero. <laughs> that should always be at least one. And we do another one here where we yield return this cover team. The only reason this is a cover team is because this on damage method is in the actor class, which is a base class for both player and enemy. For when the enemy is attacking, or rather, when the enemy's attacking, there's none of this show attack QTE because, I mean, obviously it's not another person. There's no QTE to respond to. But the on damage is a coroutine on the player's part where we show our guard QTE, that ring that we were looking at before. And depending on whether the player hits the the guard button in, t in the at the right time, so the rings are, um, are aligned, you know, they'll get a percentage of damage decreased from the attack. However, for the enemy, like, that just immediately finishes. And the base class, uh, well, in this case, enemies on damage, it's, it's implementing this, but in reality, it's a pass through, right? Star coroutine, I mean to do that, on damage. There's no, the only yield is this one right here because we just need to return something in order to actually fulfill the, uh, the compilation requirements. Yield return null will act um, the same as doing a yield return new wait for end of frame. Now it doesn't pause execution or anything like that, but you know, it, it is technically a wasted frame of animation, but you know, we're talking running 60 frames a second. One frame when the enemy's damage is already calculated isn't going to kill anyone. Whereas on the player's side, and sorry, we're going on a little tangent here. I know I said I'd do some code review if people asked, but it, um, it, it feels good to explain it while I'm talking about related features and, and um, functionality. So on the player's side, we do the coroutine for showing the guard and the guard works very similarly. It yield return, um, yield return null while we're waiting for the guard QTE to be finished and disable. Or when the player presses the B button, which is the guard button. And stores a, stores a state variable for whether we're successfully guarding or not. And then in the on damage in the base class, it knows about is guarding and it applies a calculate block damage which at the which does a it looks at the stamina and it looks at the stamina required to guard based on the and this was based on the equipment how much stamina is required for guarding so if they have um, let's say it takes 50% of your stamina to guard and that's a 100% of your damage reduction so our shield says it's going to reduce the damage by 50% if we have a, our full 50 stamina that it takes to guard. Now, if the player is guarding but they only have 25 stamina, 
that's then going to be half of that guard damage. So it'll only guard 25% of the hit, and the remaining 75% will be applied to the player. So, long story long, we want to have our show attack QTE. We're engaging, uh, we have our accuracy from our player stats. Normal accuracy and critical attack accuracy. So I'm going to, hmm. Inventory equipped weapon, get definition. This is just a casting call. This isn't searching anything. So there's no real performance impact on this. So I don't mind doing this twice. So I'm going to put these methods here for now, but I'm going to move these somewhere else. Um, private int float. Private float uh, calculate normal attack accuracy. Private float critical attack accuracy. If I could spell. I always, I always hit T instead of Y, fat fingering it. And we are going to get our weapon here in both and first off float. So we're just going to make this a, the combination of the weapon's attack accuracy and the stat attack accuracy. Now if the stats are zero, the weapon's zero, we have zero attack accuracy. And therefore, um, well, since I'm basing it on a rect uh, rectangle transform in the Unity UI system, it'll probably throw an error at uh, trying to draw a rectangle with a zero width. It might yell at me a little bit. But quite frankly, we're never going to have that scenario. You know, I'm always, at the moment, I'm always going to have a weapon equipped. And, um, you know, even if I don't, if I decide to do away with the equipment, I'm going to go ahead and have a base attack accuracy of something. I haven't quite thought that through yet, but. You know, there's, there's not going to be a scenario where the player in the final game will be able to get themselves to a zero attack accuracy. Well, I say that now, but then I just thought of um, things like the darkness skill from fi or status effect from the Final Fantasy series, or blind, or you know anything else. Maybe I'll have a special thing where there's you don't get attacked, um, you can't attack normally, and you need to do skills only, or Vice versa, so, you know, never say never. But for the moment, we're going to go ahead and go with this, and we can change that later if we want to. Because we are the masters of our own domain, and we can make decisions no matter, you know, what the consequences. Critical attack accuracy and critical attack accuracy. All right, so there we go, there we go. Um, Yeah, so as part of my initial design, I had considered the idea of having, you know, multiple weapon types you could equip. And depending on the weapon type, the QTE would change to something else. And yeah, it was uh, Undertale that inspired me to that, right? To, to think of that, where one weapon has that normal slider with the multiple points of contact, and some weapons give you multiple... Um, indicators going across so you hit multiple times and other ones do a uh, mash the button to hit more yeah you know, i thought that was an interesting idea you don't really see too often i want to incorporate something like that into my game but for now we will get rid of this we will go ahead and call those functions calculate critical attack calculate normal attack and let's 
go over here. So our damage. I'm going to go ahead and split this off because I want to. I want to keep these calculate methods together until I decide to move them somewhere else. Uh, our damage is going to be a float. Yes. You might be thinking my uh, method names are a little long. That's always better to be more descriptive than less. You know, you don't need to use, um, you know, abbreviations or anything. It doesn't hurt anything. You know, unless your method name's coming out to like here, then it's just silly. So I've got my normal attack damage as well as my critical attack damage. So let's go ahead and continue along as if we're having our weapons. So I'm going to have my initial damage is going to be a randomization between the minimum and maximum. We're going to go and do that. Now our critical attack damage. Let's go ahead and call calculate normal attack damage. And you know what? I'm not going to check to see this because I might want to call this under a simulated um, in a simulated state later, and I don't want to have to keep setting this next critical attack field every time I want to check to see what my critical attack damage would be. So I'm going to go ahead and just say, and what did I put here? Um, critical attack damage modifier and a weapon attack damage mod or yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and get this. No. Always practice safe code. You know, null reference exceptions are not our friend. As I said before, there should always be a weapon equipped, but if there isn't, I don't want to be blown up in this spot. Crit percent. Crit percent. one. Um, no. So this is where it gets a little tricky and depending on your verbiage changes things, right? So critical percent. Critical percent at a minimum should be one and we should be increasing off of that. However, if we're describing it, a critical attack at blah 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 would do attack times 1.2 or 1.5 or 1.8 or whatever our our rating would be in a description saying okay well this weapon adds 0.2 critical attack damage well if you say adds 0.2 critical attack that implies 1.2 percent but if you're saying the critical attack is 0.2 then the critical attack is you know obviously doing a fifth of the damage and it's, uh, you know, that verbiage could be confusing. And it's important to be consistent here. Am I storing these values from a one base or from a zero base? Hmm. So I think up until this point, and I've got this, where's my weapon definitions? Data. There we are. Yeah. Critical damage modifier, and it's set to 
I'm going to say zero. And I'm going to store it zero base. And then when I go to describe it in text in game, it will be adds 50% damage or adds 20% damage or adds 2% damage or whatever the number is. I'll do that. I'll do that. Multiply by 100 or whatever conversion to, to take that uh, decimal to percentage and then describe it that way in text. Which then means that my critical percent is going to start at 1. And I'm adding attack modifiers So then we're going to return the damage times the critical percentage. Now, you, and there you are. All right, so damage is defined here. So forget that bottom section. If this dot next attack is critical, then Damage is equal to calculate critical attack damage, else damage is equal to calculate normal attack damage. And goodbye to all of that. And there we go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So that's our damages and accuracy. Uh, defense percentage and stamina recovery. Defense percentage. Well, actually, let's look at percent damage blocked is in our actor class. And I am storing that in a percentage format. Yeah, defense percentage. Mm -hmm. Well, now hang on a second. So percent damage blocked, that is if I successfully guard. That isn't an overall defensive uh, state for the player. Armor damage reduction, which is also a percentage. Do I even use this anywhere? I do. On damage. We apply our block damage. We apply our armor damage. Minus equal the amount times. And then because this is cast to an int, it goes back to being a whole number. And we apply that damage to the player. Well, yeah. So, armor damage reduction and guard damage reduction are two different things. Uh, 
and I want to label all these things that are acting as percents as a percentage. I don't want to just look at that it's a float and assume it's a percentage. And because these stats are used in the actor class, I'm going to need a few virtual methods I can use. So. I've been calling everything calculate up till now, so I'll go ahead and continue that trend. And Let's go. There you are. And I also have my currently equipped armor that is setting this. Hmm. Um, I thought I had a thing for that. Yes, yeah, so this is just setting armor damage reduction. Yeah, this is the one I'm using up here, right? Yeah. I don't want to set this directly though. Yeah, I don't want to set this directly. Oh, 
It is in the equipable inventory. Okay. So I'll tell you what. I'm going to... Do I want to make this a part of the equipable inventory? I've got this wired up to calculate whenever a piece of body armor is changed. I'll tell you what, I'll figure out what to do with this a little bit later. But for now, I cannot allow this to be affecting those base stats. So we're going to take these guys. I'm going to kill this function as a whole and leave this here to deal with later. And we need to So we get our, our base damage reduction percentage, which honestly now is no longer required because I'm just getting the armor every single time. But you know, I'm going to leave this here because the enemy might have a armor rating and I want to be able to apply that to them as well, along with some extra uh, temporary buffs or damage reduction buffs or anything like that. Well, I guess debuffs would be the proper um, verbiage. So yeah, so I'm fine with this. Now, similarly, I need the uh, reduction of damage on guard. damage reduction percent on the shield. Okay, cool. Now, I did change this, right? Yeah, calculate normal damage percentage. And I changed this to use the calculate guard reduction percentage. Yeah, okay. I'm happy with that. What other stats did I have here? Stamina recovery. Um, player, actor. Yeah, actor has the stamina recovery rate. Now, this is based on the time, and our current 
stamina recovery rate for the player is set at 35, which is a decent clip. I think it increases not a fair rate. Three, four, so a little bit under five seconds. One, two, three, four, so about four. And I'm sure if I was exactly timing it, it would be slightly different. Can see my fake uh, temporary NPCs back over here, hanging out. These lovely capsule people, completely useless. And my test save points with my really crappy looking screen at the moment, but it functions well. Sort of. I just broke my serialization on player stats, so that happened. But uh, actually, that's easily solved. Done. Fixed. Wonderful. Perfect. Or not. Well, I can figure that serialization out issue. Um, I'll figure that serialization issue out later. But for now, actually for now, let's go ahead and um, tell you what, we can play around with this a little bit, ensure that things are working. Let's go ahead and make my uh, normal attack accuracy plus equals 0.5. So now we should see the normal attack section on my bar go way up. If I can find an enemy in this tall grass. I didn't actually go up that far. Hmm. Well, I suppose this isn't actually a percentage, is it? This is a pixel size, or rather a, um, hmm. yeah, that begs the question. What, um, what's the value on my weapon right now? Point four. So yeah, in that case, an increase of 0.5 should have been pretty substantial. Accuracy is equal to zero, plus equals the weapon, normal attack accuracy, plus equal stats, normal attack accuracy. Return this accuracy. Normal width is equal to that. Critical width is equal to that. Size delta is equal to this percentage times the total width of the of the bar. Yeah. Maybe I hadn't um, saved and everything. So let's go and take another look at that real quick. Or I won. No, my code should have handled for if the bar is larger than the target area. So let's take a closer look. Yeah, okay, there we go. That was interesting. I wonder what the um, I wonder what the deal was with that. Let's try a couple more. 
yeah, maybe I just hadn't saved or something. I usually pretty good about hitting Control Shift B to rebuild my solution, which should always save. But you never know. You know, people make mistakes. So let's go ahead and fiddle with our. Tell you what, critical attack accuracy. And where are we doing that at? Let's go ahead and log our damage as well. go astronomical. Twenty percent or rather um <laughs> it's a zero to one scale, so that's actually quite a bit more damage for a critical attack. Yeah, so our critical attack was huge and we did 600 damage, whereas these enemies, I think, have around 30 to 40 HP per. And our critical accuracy far outweighs our normal attack accuracy. It's interesting. So I did notice that my guard this time, it's doing zero damage, so I clearly mess something up in that range. 645 damage that time according to the log. So, well first off, first off let's look at the normal attack damage as well. And I suppose while I was thinking about it I should have put some log statements in there for the damage values, but we can wait a second. Man, Undertale is such a good soundtrack. What a great game. All right. So, let's see here. So clearly my normal damage was being applied. It's my guard damage that's being a jerk. So, first off, calculate guard damage. Percentage is equal to blah. Percentage plus equals the stats for the guard damage percent. Percent plus equals the weapon damage reduction percent, which is going to be somewhere... Yeah, so it's a 0.5, and my player stats damage reduction is going to be zero because I have none. So... What did I screw up? Calculate normal damage reduction takes this. Calculate guard damage reduction is just the same as the variable. Block percentage is equal to that. Amount times block percentage. Block percent minus that. So I wasn't doing partial blocks. I was I had enough stamina for the full block. So unless my block percent is zero, which, you know, I don't know. Percent damage blocked is going to be 0.5. Now then When in doubt, let's go ahead and step through the code. <laughs> Come here, you silly wabbits. Don't you know? Tricks are for kids. All right. And plink, and... 
What do we got here? Oh, and forgive me, I just noticed the recording didn't switch back to Visual Studio because the game is on a breakpoint. Uh, can I do this manually? I can. Good. Okay, I'm gonna have to remember that. Good thing I got this third monitor set up showing my recording, otherwise I wouldn't have noticed that. So, percentage is 0.5. Plus zero. Plus whatever's gonna come back from our inventory here is 100% damage Oh. Wait a s- oh. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so I'm taking the weapon, the, the shield damage reduction, and I'm also, I didn't unhook this from my property event changed, so I'm also setting the base to half. So yeah, of course I'm taking no damage, I'm guarding 100% damage. Silly me. Shields are for smart people. Oh, stop debugging. I no longer need to do this. But I do need to do something with this guard stamina hit amount. Especially since I, you know, very well might want to have status effects. I keep coming back to status effects when I'm dealing with these um, these passive skills and doing these calculated outputs. You know, I might want to have a debuff that deals with, you know, increasing the stamina cost of things, of attacking, of um, of defending. So, well, hell, even of escaping, because esca my escape takes a um, it doesn't take stamina, but it does drop an initial amount of stamina when you start escaping, and that was mainly to prevent the player from taking other actions or guarding indefinitely while while um, retreating. The stamina regeneration stops, and it also drops your stamina by a certain amount. So you can only get one full guard and then maybe a partial while you're running away. You could stop running away at any time, but... You know, you don't want to let the player sit there and have full defensive capability and run away to their heart's content. So, that all said and done, what do we have here? So I, yeah. So guard stamina hit amount that I do not utilize in this class anywhere. But, We'll go the same route. important to use the word percentage instead of amount. Those denote very different things. And actually when I come back around here I should make these private instead of protected since I'm only accessing them through these calculation methods. Is that true? Yes, that is true. Yes, that's going to be the base amount. Now my actor well, does not know about the inventory, correct? Correct. My enemies have an inventory in the sense that the inventory defines the experience given by the enemy as well as any um, materials and items that are dropped. So how do I want to do this? I don't want to update when it's equipped anymore. And honestly, 
kind of don't want to do anything with this anymore, but I'll leave it here for now, just in case I change my mind. Um, yeah, so percent damage blocked is fine. Guard stamina hit amount. So the reality is that if I don't have a shield... My percent damage blocked is zero. And if I am not blocking anything, I also don't have a stamina cost associated with that. However, let's take you with me. I already dealt with that damage reduction percent, didn't I? spell. I do not have a player stats aspect of that, do I? I'm not going to do that right now. I'm not going to worry about that for the moment. Yeah, so I'm not calling that from anywhere in here, but when the base... So if you don't know how virtual and overridden methods get called, in the base class it's going to call calculate guard stamina percentage when we go to calculate the actual percentage um, protected when the guard QTE was successfully done. Now when it calls that, it has its own implementation of this calculate guard stamina percentage, but because the instance is actually an instance of a player and not an instance of an actor directly, and actually I think actor is an abstract, yeah, an actor is an abstract class in my definition, so I can't even have an instance of an actor, but because I'm a, my caller is a player, and the player has overridden this method, this version of the method gets called instead. And if I want to apply the logic that is in the base classes implementation of this method, I need to call the base method explicitly like so. Now that will be 50% total at all times, and that will be good. And everyone will be happy with this. He's dead in one hit. Guard. Huh, alright. So I still screwed something up. What do I got going on here?
still coming back as 0.5. Percent damage blocked is zero. Am I still setting this from somewhere? Oh, ha. Huh. Yeah, because I put it in the editor, of course. Um, do I want to leave that there? I put that in the editor initially for testing reasons. Yeah, let's, this isn't going to be an editor to find value, so I can drop that. Uh, I can drop this. I don't even use these anymore. That was a carryover from when I was initially... Yeah, yeah, these are old. I'm not going to touch those for the moment. I can clean that up later. I'm keeping in mind a... Um, I have another idea for a large game that I'm going to reuse a lot of this code for. So I'm trying to keep in mind some things. Um, namely, the fact that I'm going to have a um, uh, more of an action RPG uh, combat system. More of a Dark Souls type of deal. Where it's, or a um, Nier or... Uh, yeah, you know, you, know what is, you know what that is. <laughs> So I do want to keep in mind a few things that I, um, you know, I don't want to just holistically rip out things from when I was prototyping ideas and decided to go with this um, uh, transitional battle system, or represent, representative battle system, rather, where the uh, enemies on the overworld represent a unit of enemies and you go to another representative um, battle arena instead of just fighting in the, um, that specific location in the world. That being said, I definitely don't need to be setting some of these things from the editor anymore. Now that I've got a equipment system and a stat system and I'm deriving these things from those values, I can, I can test things by augmenting my weapons, not my um, editor stats. So, yeah, those two things are still in the editor that I'm going to remove later. And stamina recovery rate, which is our next stat we're looking at. So... By default, this is 35. And how do I have it set for my enemies? Uh, stamina recovery rate of 15 for my enemies. So at any rate, our um, defense percentage and our block percentage will now actually be zero. Well, it'll be 50% damage reduction because of the armor. So yeah, now we're taking damage. The blocked attack took uh, just that much, about a... Um, yeah, and that's clearly double the amount that I dropped off. So so I'm glad, with, I'm happy with that. Now how about our stamina recovery rate? I literally only use it from this one spot, and I never set it anywhere else to my knowledge. Yeah. So stamina recovery rate.
This is essentially X stamina per second. So we'll go and follow the same the same pattern here. And I'll go ahead and I'll move these functions around later. You know when I'm uh, you know when I'm not recording. I don't think I need to waste. Well, whatever. I'll just move these somewhere right now. Actually, I mean I'm really just going to throw these at the bottom, um, above my events, underneath my um, underneath the rest of my logic. And I haven't been very good about it so far, but. I'll go ahead and wrap these in a region statement so I can collapse them. All right. Uh, player, where are you? Is this a float? Yeah. Thought I had a stat for that. Stamina recovery, yeah. Oh, haha. <laughs> Before I go change that, I did swap this up, right? Calculated. Um, yeah. That's why I couldn't see the. Um... Oh. Um, well, that's fine, actually. The purpose of this property is so that um, objects in the scene, other than the player, can see the player's stats, but. Really, they don't need to see anything like the attack damage or stamina recovery rate or anything like that. Um, at least not with what I have now for the AI. Maybe the AI will make decisions based on that in the future, but that's that's a whole other matter than today's work. So for the moment, they only really, you know, I really only need to expose the HP, the stamina, and when I implement it, the MP for. Um, you know, for checking to see if I can use the skills or if I have enough stamina to run away or, you know, things like that. So I'll, I'll leave this as base stats for now, especially since it's abstract in the parent class that I need to expose the stats. And rather than being a stats of type T or whatever, where T is a implementation of base stats, it's just, here's the base stats. So... That's fine. Stamina recovery rate. I am going to... I've set this to 35 in the editor, so we're going to go ahead and take him and he'll be 35. No. I'm going to leave this in the editor for the moment. 
because I've defined this as for the enemies to be 15. So let's just make sure we haven't, ah, shit. Went ahead and, uh, I went away. Whoops. Are you done saving? I have errors. Yeah, stamina recovery at 15. Okay, good. And player is going to be 35. I'll leave those there for now. Um, no. No, you know what? I am fine with this. And there's a very particular reason I'm fine with this. And that is because... I'm going to say for the enemies... Well, first off, player. So I've got this nice little, I, I had this stamina recovery rate set before. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and say, our, our base stamina recovery rate is zero, right? So as a temp thing, I'm gonna go ahead and say stam recovery rate plus equals 35. And that's my base for players. I will figure out what to do with that later, but I don't want to keep setting that in the editor. Plus whatever my stat stamina recovery rate is, which which I'll, I'll fiddle with here in a moment and we'll see that work in the, in the game. However, my enemies have a stamina recovery rate of 15. So, bada bing, bada boom. which this will change based on the type of enemy. And those enemy stats will be pulled from a um, uh, more than likely a SQLite database later on down the line. But I'm not quite ready for that step yet, so this will do for the moment. So come here, rabbit. I see you. Wow, my stamina rate was real quick. I did something wrong. I didn't set this on accident or anything, did I? No. Oh. Maybe. Let's find out. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Yeah, so that's my 35. And boy, actually, let's um, yeah. So let's bring let's bring that down a bit more.
Yeah, so my stamina recovery is much quicker. So that's good. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and drop... I'm going to drop all those right there. I'm going to keep things at my normal baseline for critical attacks, normal attacks, and, and all that stuff unmodified, just using what is defined by the weapons. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that'll work out. 